that others may live. We respected them. We, we knew that they were capable of, of some serious destruction, and we knew there were a lot of them. They got tons and tons of equipment. We respected that. We were real worried about their, their armored vehicles. And of course, our biggest fear was the T-72 tank. The Soviet T-72, known in Iraq as the Lion of Babylon, is the backbone of the Iraqi Armored Corps. Its 125-millimeter main gun can destroy targets over 1,800 meters away. It's a 41-ton monster, plated with armor that is in places 300 millimeters thick. Still, it can reach a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. This makes the T-72 one of the fastest and most lethal heavy tanks in the world. And Sudan has more than 1,000 of them, deployed along the Republican Guard's defensive line. They're supported by hundreds of armored vehicles, including the Soviet-designed BMP. The Republican Guard seems ready to take on all comers. Heading straight for them is the U.S.-led 7th Corps, with hundreds of M2 Bradley fighting vehicles and well over 1,000 tanks. The most powerful of these is the M1A1 Abrams main battle tank. The Abrams is armed with a 120 millimeter high velocity cannon and protected by composite armor that's as tough as 60 centimeters of pure steel. It's one and a half times heavier than the T-72, but just as fast, making it the most powerful tank on the battlefield. By the end of the day, on February 25th, these two armored forces are only 14 kilometers apart. The morning of the 26th, very early, uh, perhaps uh, 4.30, 5 o'clock, I can't remember precisely, we suddenly get uh, a change of orders and uh, essentially find and destroy the Republican Guard for all intents and purposes. It got to the point, sort of late morning, early afternoon, where you couldn't see more than perhaps uh, 20, 30 yards. All of a sudden, we're about to go into combat against the one real enemy that we had practiced to defeat, and suddenly our visibility is terrible. But the Abrams is up to the job. It has a thermal imaging system that can identify the heat signatures of potential targets, even in the worst conditions. So we're moving in this very limited visibility. And uh, we begin to identify some hot spots. As McMaster's platoon approaches 73 Easting, a line of longitude on the map, he encounters a Tawakalna Division forward outpost. It's manned by infantry with anti-tank guns and rocket-propelled grenades. And it was at this point that we first received fire from the enemy. What we had to realize is we were paralleling a road that ran due east right into the enemy's position. The Battle of 73 Easting, the last great tank battle of the 20th century, is about to begin. 